Hey, it's Dave and Evelyn from the camera store. What are we doing today, Dave? We're gonna help walk you through Canon's crop sensor lineup. Before we get into it, I just want to give a big shout out to the Calgary Folk Fest who allowed us to come in and test these cameras. We had a great time just capturing some photographs of all the musicians and everything happening at this great festival. It's a visual feast. There's so much stuff oh, yeah. to take in when you go down there. So with these cameras, how do you make sense of which is the best fit for you? Yeah, I mean, this lineup is pretty robust now. We have everything from the Canon EOS R100 that we just reviewed. This is their latest one, and this is their entry level. So this gets you into the RF mount system. Then we have the R50 and the R10, which are very similar on paper, so we're going to get into those two. And then on the top of the line, we do have the Canon R7, which is my personal favorite. But we have a lot to talk about with all these cameras. We're going to talk about the R100 first. This is the most affordable R-series camera that you can get on the market, and this really gets you into the RF lens system. I mean, we recently took it to the Calgary Stampede, and we had a great time with it. Now, it does have some limitations, but there's a lot to this camera that gets your feet wet if you want to get into photography. Yeah, for example, if you're someone that's just getting into photography, you have a 24 megapixel sensor. You can get some great images. We like the look of the Canon files, and you also have some video flexibility as well. Yeah, what I do like about this camera is that I have the ability to go from full automatic into full manual. So if I'm just getting started in photography, I don't quite understand. This camera makes it very simple to work with and the menu itself is designed for first time users. Yeah, when we step into the R50 and the R10, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the limitations with this camera, but I think that this is a good option that Canon has put out there in terms of just being able to get into the system. And if you want to do so at the cheapest price point, it's only $7.99 Canadian for the kit. Next up, we have the Canon EOS R50. Now, this camera is definitely a step up. The first thing that you notice physically is that you have a fully articulating screen, and not only that, it's a touch screen. And I would say that was my biggest thing that I felt like the R100 is missing, is that it's an entry-level camera, and it has a lot of basic functionality, but if you're moving from a smartphone, you might feel a little bit more at home having a touch screen, and having that articulation is also great if you're doing content creation, vlogging, selfie, Fees. This also has USB-C charging. So I think even just with the articulating screen and USB-C charging, those two features alone would make it worth the upgrade. Yeah, now we step up from there and it's a very small step to the R10. With so many similar features to the R50, it's crazy the comparison to it. We do get a much improved grip and in my case, I like that a lot more. Yeah, it's a we, little deeper. Yeah, we still retain the same articulating screen, but we get things like an improved frames per second. If you're shooting sports or any kind of action, that's really nice to have. We step up to 23 frames per second where we're limited to 15 frames per second on the R50 and the R100, we go down even slower to 6.5. Yeah, it's a big difference. And I also like that you have multiple control dials <laughs> with the R10. I mean, this is becoming a more like manual control camera. I think people that are really stepping up in terms of their knowledge and just being able to have more of that control in a tactile way is very nice on the R10. Now there are a few differences between these cameras. One of them is the ability to connect it to your computer. The R50 you can plug and play and use it as a webcam, just natively, it's fantastic. With the R10, I do need to use the Canon EOS utility to use it as a webcam. The other thing I want to mention is that my screen is slightly higher resolution. <laughs> However, on the video side of things, you definitely have the best advantage of the cameras we've talked about so far. Yeah, my camera will go up to 4K 60, which is very nice to work with. But also if I step down to 1080, I can shoot 120 frames per second. Yeah, and there is a crop on there on the 4K 60. However, I can shoot 4K 30 on the R50, unlike the R100, which you were limited. If you want to shoot 4K, it was with a pretty heavy crop and that was only at 4K 24 frames per second. And the video footage, I think you kind of step up through the lineup in terms of the quality of it, and of course the flexibility as well. Speaking of stepping up through this whole lineup, we're gonna talk about the top end. This is the Canon R7, which is my personal favorite. We're gonna talk about the R7 because of course it is part of the APS-C lineup, but this is a big price difference when we compare it back to the bottom end, which was the R100. I mean, for $7.99 for the R100, we step up to two grand roughly for this guy here. Yeah. What do you get for that? Well a whole host of things. First off, a much, much bigger battery, fully weather sealed body, that's magnesium alloy, much faster frames per second. I mean, this is much closer to the higher end cameras in the Canon lineup, but in a crop form. 
At the core of the Canon EOS R7 is the highest resolution sensor in the bunch. It's 32.5 effective megapixels, and it's also an image stabilized sensor with five axis of image stabilization. It's the fastest scanning <laughs> sensor of the bunch, which opens up a plethora of video options. And it's just a fast camera overall. You can shoot 30 frames per second. Dave, what else am I missing here? <laughs> well, things like dual memory card slots, which we yeah. really appreciate with that. Uh, I can't underestimate how important the image stabilization is. I mean, that really helps out get quality photos in very sketchy light conditions. And in video, uh, the stabilization is very effective if you're walking with this camera. Yeah, like you're kind of getting into these professional level features. And so does it justify the price point? I mean, we're talking about a camera with this kit that's about double, if not a bit more, than the R100. 100% agree. I mean, I found with the R100 that it's a great camera to get your feet wet, really kind of figure out, do I like photography at all? But you're quickly going to outgrow that camera, where I find with the R7, you grow into this camera so much more. So yeah, both can like take photos and video, but this is just going to give you a lot more options, more creative control, and more of that flexibility for you to grow into. For me, the price is very justifiable. With the feature set of this camera and how they've implemented everything, uh, I could easily recommend this camera and I like working with this. Yeah, it really doesn't hold anything back from some of the even higher end cameras, the full frame lineup. I like that we have the joystick on the back of the camera. We have lots of custom control dials. And as we were mentioning earlier, the weather ceiling and build of this is definitely a step up. And so, you know, with these cameras, we wanted to give you this overview, but this is kind of a monster in comparison to the previous three cameras. When you're holding the R7, it feels like a meaty camera, right? Yeah. With the R100, it's almost like pinkies up. <laughs> <laughs> It's like pinkies up, you know. It's a very tiny little camera, but it's that's part of the that's part of the allure of this camera is that Definitely. I can take it with me everywhere. And this is like a fantastic family camera. Yeah, I think where the the tougher decisions lies is in that middle zone. When we're talking about the R10 and the R50, you kind of have to pick and choose like which features are most important to you. Yeah, I mean, if you don't shoot any action or sports, then go for the R50. It's great. But if you like the grip and you like that faster frames per second, the R10 makes a lot more sense. Not to mention the video features are a little bit more robust on the R10. So it does get a little bit murky between those two, I'd say in particular. Uh, but we hope that we gave you kind of a good overview of some of the differences if you're choosing between these. I mean, overall, all these cameras are capable of producing some excellent image quality. And we have a host of lenses to choose from in the RF lineup. Yeah, and depending on what you're willing and able to invest in the camera, I mean, the R100 still is a nice solid option to get you into the system. But if you want to spend a little bit more upgrading throughout the lineup, definitely has its advantages. Overall, all these cameras are capable of some really good image quality. The real question is what level of performance that you need for your style of photography. The R100 is an excellent camera for entry-level users. And if you are more of a content creator and you want to step up your game, the R50 or the R10 surely come into play. Yeah, and then of course we have that R7, which is the top of the line. You're getting a lot of robust features that we find in a lot of the professional level Canon cameras. But of course we want to know, what do you guys think? What are you leaning towards? What camera is really speaking to you? Where do you think you're seeing the most value? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you follow us both on Instagram. And if you're new to our channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll catch you again very soon. Hey, thanks for sticking around and watching this guide to the Canon Crop Sensor Cameras. If you want to check out more of our recent content, click up here. And if you're a Canadian, you want to shop local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.